Hi, so this is a tutorial on how to turn a photo that is relatively new into something that looks kind of old, damaged, basically on how to age a photo. So the first thing we'll do is we'll use the crop tool. It's the fifth tool down in our toolbar. And I'm going to just go ahead and make a selection around this car that pretty much crops away all that stuff. So I'm just going to crop it down here and probably crop it up a little bit. Pull it in from the sides a bit here and just kind of get a bit of this image in the window. Press enter and now this image has been cropped. And again while I'm working if I think the composition's a little off I can use the crop tool to kind of help me here. So let's say maybe I want to come in a little bit on the left, and I'll press enter again. Now the next thing that we need to do is find a layer that we can place on top of this image that will serve as the aging factor. Any of these will work. Yeah, I want to look for one that's rather big, and also you could look for one that has like a photo edge onto it. So any of these are cool. I'm actually probably going to go with this first one. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image as texture and save it to my desktop. Cool. Then I'm going to go back into my document here in Photoshop and I'm going to open up this new texture that's on my desktop. And here's this new document. So now I have two documents that I've opened up weird thing about working in CS5 is that the windows don't automatically tile so you can't really see the two things you're working on but we can change that if we go up to the top of the screen we can make it so that we can see our two images at the same time so now you see our images left and right this again I did by going up to arrange documents and choosing the two up version so what I'm going to do is grab my move tool click on this texture that I got and I'm literally just going to drag the texture over and plop it on top of the old car. And then this is obviously a little big so I'm going to resize this texture. So I'm going to do a command T which is the transform tool. For those of you working with a PC it would be a control T. And then I'm going to click the link at the top of the screen right here that constrains the width and the height and I'm going to bring down the width and the height of this new texture and line it up with my document. And then I'll press enter. And then it's pretty easy from here. Now what I can do is start to play with the blending modes. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and close off this image. I'll go ahead and make this image bigger so we can see what we're working on here. And now what I'm going to focus on is on the layers palette so that I can blend this new layer. We've got a background layer and we've got this new layer one. If you toggle the visibility for the layers, you'll see that layer one is indeed the texture that we got from the internet and the background layer is the original photo that we started with. So I'm going to just go ahead and name my layer one. I'll name it texture. And naming layers is a good thing to do that way, as you keep working and building up more complicated projects, you can keep track of what you're doing. Now, what we're going to do is really quickly age this photo, and it, there's very little we have to do. Basically, all you need is a photo, some sort of texture, and then the next thing you want to do is play with blending modes. So on the top here, above texture, there's the word normal. This is the different blending mode options that you have. If you cycle through these blending mode options, each one of them will do a little bit to change the way the image works with what's underneath it. Some of them, like darken for example, will show the darker parts and the lighter parts won't show through. Some of them you may find don't do anything. But as I go down the list here, you'll start to see that the image starts to kind of mix with what's underneath it. And you may find that when you're playing around with some of these they don't do anything. But for now, color dodge is actually looking pretty cool. I'm going to keep going down. Linear dodge is okay. Lighter color is okay. Overlay is usually one that I really like, as well as soft light is a good one, usually. 
So I'm going down the list here. And actually, here's hard light. This is cool. This is looking now like this photo is really beat up, something that maybe you found in the attic or on the street, an old photo. The only thing that's missing now, though, is that the colors from the original photo, the background image, are still a little bit too bright. So now the texture layer has a hard light blending mode set to it, which is cool. But I'm just going to toggle the visibility on texture and turn off the eye. And I'm going to click on background. And I'm going to do some color adjustments to this, just so it looks a little older. So what I'm going to do here on the background layer is I'm going to click on this little button here, this little black and white looking circle button down here. And this will allow me to choose some effects that I can apply to this image. And I'm, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into hue and saturation. Now this is going to create an adjustment layer. This is the adjustment layer button. And this new adjustment layer is going to apply to whatever is underneath it. When I double click on it, my adjustment windows will open right here above my layers channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the saturation and make this image black and white. If I hit colorize, not only can I lower the saturation to make it black and white, but I can also then choose to kind of tint the color by sliding the hue. So I'm going to go for like a sepia tone color to make this look again like an old photo. And then I can also play with the lightness. Now, once I've adjusted this, I can throw on the texture and it starts to really look like an old photo that's been torn up and destroyed. Now this texture, maybe it's being a little bit too visible, so I can play with the opacity and lower the opacity of this texture layer on top. So you can see I've now lowered the opacity to 66%. And then I could also go back down to the image here and I could play again with some of these controls in the hue and saturation layer. So here I am bringing up the lightness so now it's starting to maybe look like this photo was really left out in the sun and it's starting to disappear and, you know, get destroyed. So I'm going to find a good place for it here. I can again play with the hue if I need to. If I wanted it to be black and white, I could lower the saturation. And then there's my old photo coming to life. Thanks a lot. And please come back for more tutorials. I'll be putting more up um, in the next couple weeks and months. Have fun.